Don't let your talent take you where your character can't keep you. Come on, you've got to say that again, man. You've got to say that again. <laughs> Don't let your talent take you where your character can't keep you. Well, a very, very warm welcome to the Goldmine Show. We keep saying that we are happy to bring this show to you because we have not doubt it makes a difference to our life, to a couple of lives. And we want to invite you to keep just sharing it out and let's interact. Let's have an amazing conversation, my friends. Follow us on the Goldmine Show on Facebook, on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And let's keep building a great community that believes in the greatness inside of every single single one of us my friends tell you what man when i say that i'm confident about the future it is not without a basis it's not without a reason it is because there are individuals out there who've decided to invest in the next generation then the next generation is also showing up and demonstrating the investment like my guest today he's an amazing young man my friend you want to tell a friend to tell a friend because we've got the one and only <laughs> Boris D my man how you doing I'm good good to see you Boris man you too you're doing all right yes man you're looking sharp thank you like your bow tie thank like you. your seat man thank you you're right yes fantastic well maybe we just start here by by, by just saying by the boss how old are you i'm 12. you're 12 years of age yes you already go to school faith ventures christian academy faith ventures christian academy yes great which grade are you grade seven you're in grade seven yes and high school coming so far it's good uh-huh i'm finishing in the next four years uh-huh yes you're looking forward yes all right so how, how do we describe our journey so far well my journey has been good it's uh -huh. been interesting yep it's just an unexpected journey because right. God uses the people who you don't think are going to be used. Right. He uses available people. Right. Yes. And you have been that available guy. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I'm also told you're a pastor's kid. Yes. Or is it a bishop's kid? Bishop. Bishop's kid. Yes. How is it being a bishop? Dad is a bishop. <laughs> Mom is a reverend. It's good. Uh -huh. It challenges you to be what they are yep. and pushes you to a new limit that right. you need to break every day. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like when you look at dad, man, Bishop, amazing friend of mine. And by the way, your your dad is a good friend of mine. I'm sure yeah. you know that. Yeah. Your mom is a good friend of mine. Your yeah. family is actually good friends of ours. Yes. But when you look at dad, what are some of those things that truly inspire you and you say, I want to be that that I see? Um, number one, his taste in fashion. Uh-huh. Oh, the fashion. Yeah. So this is a function of that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, he spends so much time near God, uh -huh. and he's a very loving person. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Uh huh. And 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 mom, maybe something you want to say to mom. Mom, she's the one who helps me write my book. Uh huh. She helped me. It came slowly, slowly, but right. she's always there to support you. Yeah. And she also helps me in my homework. Oh, she helps you with your homework. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. You know, one of the times that really, I, I watched you guys doing a Facebook Live. Yes. And uh, with your sister. Yeah. And I'm like, man, there's something interesting about those guys. Tell me about that show that you guys would do. It's called The Wise Kid Show. It the was, Wise Kid Show. Yes. Uh -huh. It was birthed during COVID. Right. There were many blessings that came with COVID, mm -hmm. but everything has two sides, right. like a coin, right. a good side and a bad side. Correct. So it was birthed through COVID. We started, we're like, Dad, Mom, we want to start a show. And then they're like, OK, what do we call it? The Wise Kid Show. Uh -huh. Then so the first time we were really, really scared. We were not, I was used to it, but my sister was not used to being in front of camera right. she was just the camera girl behind the scenes yep. person yep. but it was really good to bring her out into the limelight right. into the show uh -huh. yeah it was very fun 
Oh, your, your sister used to run the cameras? Yes. Uh -huh. She used to be the one setting up. But uh -huh. then we told her, why don't we do this show together? She's like, I'm good. Like, you can do this by your own. You're the one who is... You're the one who's the star of the show. Right. You're the one who always stays near the camera. Right. But I'm like, we need to do this together because right. I can't have a show by my own. Right. Yeah, so that was, that's how it started. So does that mean you had been doing this before? I had spoken in a couple, couple of conferences uh -huh. and, and even in church. So Wait a minute, boss. You are a conference speaker. Yes. Tell me about that, man. It was very exciting. Uh -huh. I spoke in I Speak conference on KTN. Uh -huh. And also in church, those were many opportunities God gave me to grow. You know, I Speak was a very big conference. Yes. We had big names like... Um, Pastor Kwame. Pastor Kwame all the way from Accra, Ghana. Yes. Right? We also had names like... Pastor RB. RB Burale. Yes. You shared stage with them. Yes. How did they come to you for you to be a speaker in there? So the host, Benny Hin Walubengo, uh -huh. he saw my book. Right. He, he said that I inspired him to write the book. So he's like, why don't you come and speak? And I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. And then it just all kind of happened. Wait a minute. You inspired Benny Hin Walubengo to do his book? Yes. Out of your book? Yes. Whoa. Whoa, you're already changing lives, man. <laughs> and imparting lives, man. Yes. So he said, come and speak for us. Yes. Uh, what was that like? It was a game changer because for me to share stage with RB yep. and people like Pastor Kwame, right. it was really, really amazing. Wow. Yeah. Tell me, what did you speak about? When, when they told you you're going to be speaking in this one, what, what did you prepare to speak? What came through your heart and mind and all? Um, at that moment, mm -hmm. I was speaking about my book, mm -hmm. Seven Qualities of a Wise Boy. Right. So, I was, I was like, let me speak about my book, because right. it's what impacted him to write his. Right. So, I spoke on the qualities, uh -huh. and then I told them, if you want it, you can buy the book. Right. So, it w I spoke about my book, how I made it, my story, right. and everything. Right. Yes. And, and talking about the book, man, I mean, I must say congratulations, man. I mean, that's Thank a big you. conference. Thank you. And, and I must also say, I was very honored recently to be in a conference where you also are speaker. Yes. Remember the name of the conference? Business Summit. It was Business Summit. Yes. Right in Thika. Yes. Brilliant stuff, man. And, and you shared some very profound lessons. Do you want to share some of the ones you shared before we go to the book? Yes, mm -hmm. one of the things I shared was don't let sh your talent take you where your character can't keep you. Come on, you've got to say that again, man. You've got to say that again. <laughs> don't let your talent take you where your character can't keep you. Because uh -huh. there are places, yes, your gift will make room for you, but what's going to sustain those doors? Yes. Your character. Wow. Yes. Your character sustains you. Yes. And who, who taught you this? dad and Dr. Mike Murdoch, my, our mentor and my spiritual grandfather. Dr. Mike Murdoch is your spiritual grandfather? Yes. Man, you've got an amazing uh, spiritual grandfather, man. Yes. So he said to you, don't say that statement again. Don't, he, he, I learned this from him, don't let your talent take you where your character can't keep you. Because sometimes we are very focused on the ta talent. Yes. And we're focused on the gift. Yes. But sometimes it can take us to where character does not keep us. Yes. So how do I build that character that keeps the talent good? Character is only built through the word of God. Mm -hmm. You can build character outside of the word of God, mm -hmm. but it, it's that character of just being kind, mm -hmm. loving, those mm -hmm. basics, basics, mm -hmm. being a good person, mm -hmm. innocent. But there's another way the Bible comes in. Mm -hmm. When you bring the Bible perspective into that character, mm -hmm. um, it shows people, it changes people's lives. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, when your talent makes room for you, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Your character, like, you can't go into a room of many fathers and start talking. Mm -hmm. Keep quiet mm -hmm. because they have gone ahead of you. They know more than you. Wow. Yeah. Keep, keep speaking, man. I, I'm loving what you're saying, man. Um, so that's one of the things I shared yep. and I shared if you're not willing to 
serve others, you shouldn't start a business. Because oh. business just means serving others. Uh -huh. And serving others is how you get money. Yeah. But the main way to get money is solving a problem. But solving it well gives you money. Right. Yes. So business is about serving others. Yes. And it's also about solving a problem. Well. And solving it well. Yes. But you know, boss, man, there are many people who just want to go to business just to make money. Business is not to make money. Business is about a passion. Like, I'm starting my business from a passion of beverages. I love beverages. I love making beverages at home. Right. I make milkshakes. Right. Me and my sister make milkshakes, smoothies, right. and other drinks, right. and also juices. Right. So I, I told Kayla, why don't we start a business? Right. She I was like, nah, let's not do this right now. But I'm like, we should really start a business about beverages. Right. So we're starting, we're starting that business because business has to come from a passion inside of you. But passion is not everything you need in a business. You need a mentor. Uh-huh. Because in business, you can't go blindly. Yeah. A wise man's teacher is a mentor. A fool's is experience. Boss, how, how old again did you say you are? I'm 12. No way, you cannot be 12 talking about <laughs> this way. Yes, I'm 12. So you s you're about to start a business? Yes. And your business is a beverages business? Yes. Folks, man, is, does this sound like a 12-year-old, man? I mean, let's, let's, let's talk about this and then let's, let's talk about what you're picking out of this. Because, man, we've got boss and he's picking big stuff, man. To all of you who want to speak business, man, there you go. You already have some nuggets. It's about one person. It's about solving problems. It's about service. It's about doing it well, my friend. Yes. So you've been doing beverages at home. Yes. And now you want to convert this into business? Yes. So tell me, where are you going to be selling your beverages? Uh, first, you have to look for a location. So right. we're still looking for the location. Mm -hmm. So I saw this space mm -hmm. near home. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a 7-Eleven. Right. And then there's an empty space near that. Right. So I'm like, we can put one here. Yeah. And we can put one here near Lavington. Right. Yeah, so... You just have to find a location that's comfortable t for you. Right. Yes. Right. T by the way, tell me of the juices, the milkshakes. Which one is your prefer? Which Which is M your favorite? Milkshakes. You love the milkshake. Yes. To make it or to take it? To both. <laughs> to do both. Yes. So it's probably it's gonna be your signature one. Yes. You're gonna, so for the greatest milkshakes, guys should check out for Bowersman. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic, man. I love what you're saying, man. So you also said a third thing during the business summit. I think it was something to do with giving. If yes, oh, yes. If you, if you're stingy, you're stealing from yourself. <laughs> Please say that one more time, man. <laughs> if you're stingy, yep. you're stealing from yourself. Explain that, man. When you give, yep. the Bible says, when you give, it will come back to you. So what's the parallel of that? When you give, it goes away from you. Yeah. So when you're stingy, yes. you're taking away from yourself. You're stealing. You're actually stealing. Yes. Robbing you actually use the word blind. stealing. Sorry? You're robbing yourself blind. You're not only stealing, you're robbing yourself blind. Yes. When you're stingy. Yes. But pause, man. You know, I, I wonder whether we are a really giving community. Um, that's one of the things that needs to be worked on because what people don't realize when they refuse to give that even when sinners give to church they still get money it's a principle it's a spiritual principle right. what they don't realize is when people say giving doesn't work they've not activated the spiritual law right. it's the way you you can't say gravity doesn't work Try you jumping. Try, jump. try jumping from a tree and see if uh, gravity works. Uh, you will find yourself on the ground. Yes. Gravity works. It's the same way the spiritual law. Right. God said th the only thing in the Bible He says, "Test me." Right. In it's in giving. In Malachi. Yes. Test me. Yes. It's only in giving. Yes. So giving is just as much a principle like gravity is. Yes. So whether you're saved or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. One more time, who taught you all this? I learned from reading books and from learn listening to Dr. Mike Murdoch and Dad. Right. Yes. Right. They have really inspired your life, man. Yes. 
really inspired you. Do, yeah. do, do you foresee yourself becoming a pastor boss? Yes. You do? Yes. Actually, I want to become a pastor, a musician, a businessman. Yes. Do you sing? Yes. You do the vocals or do you do an instrument? I do both. Really? Yes. So which instrument do you do? P piano. You just enjoy doing your piano. Yes. Maybe we should have brought one on side then. <laughs> we should have truly brought one on side. So you guys started this TV show or this uh, on, on Facebook with your sister. And, and how, how was that experience for you? And man, you need to give a shout out to your sister man on that camera. Man. Yes. She's been quite a pillar for you. Yes. Yep. That, ex that experience was very good yep. because like it taught me yes it's okay to have stage right but how do you deal with it right because what people when you watch great shows they're like oh i want i want to become a show i want to become a showman a show host like them but right. you don't know the stage fright that comes to the people who are hosting the show mm. so it's basically how you handle that mm. yes and were you getting butterflies as you would do your show? Yes, I was actually very scared. I just didn't show it because I'm like, we need a show. Right. You just have to flow. Right. My dad is always so chill in his shows. Yep. He flows. Yep. He has no worries. He looks like he has no stage right. But the <laughs> truth is, yep. all the people that have shows yep. have stage fright. Man, ask me. I can tell you that, <laughs> man. I got a lot. <laughs> A lot of it. But you know, I was particularly, and part of the reason why I go back to the show, I was impressed at the fact that week after week you prepared for another show. Yes. I mean, you do one today, you prepare. How did you prepare for all these shows, man? We just found topics to talk to children. Right. Because we need to build the next generation. Because, mm -hmm. yes, it, you need to build this generation, but the next generation is the one that's going to run the world. Right. Yeah. Right. So every week you prepared to talk to the next generation. Yes. You shared your values with them. Yeah. How did you research on your on your on the topics that you would discuss? So we started with the basics, love, kindness, merciful, mm. all that. Mm. The basics of the Bible. Right. So we just started talking about the basics, right. how and then we just built up on that. Right. Yes. Right. Did it get easier as you went along? Yes, it got a lot easier. Because uh -huh. when you've done a show yep. once, yep. the stage fright re reduces. Right. You can attest to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, we can exchange notes on that. <laughs> yeah. Right. When you do something over and over again, the fear of it gets less and less and less. Right. Yeah. Right. So are you looking uh, to, to hosting this big, massive show in the future? Yes. I think you should. Yeah. I think you should, man. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Fantastic, man. You talked about your book. And, man, I want, I want to just go to this book. I, I just, even before we go to the content, tell me about the journey of doing this book. I saw my dad and mom and Dr. Maddox writing books. So right. I'm like, dad, 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 I want to write a book. I want to write a book. I want to write a book. Right. So when I was nine, it actually happened. Right. Me and my mom. Went when you're what? Nine. When you're what? Nine. You're saying you wrote this book at nine? Yes. <laughs> I just want to find out. Tell us what you used to do at nine years of age. I mean, we just want to know what you did at the age of nine. Well, Boaz confirms he did the book called Seven Qualities of a Wise Boy. Maybe you can get a good shot at that one. This book was done at nine. This is three years ago. That's when he did this book. And we'll be getting into the details of this, man. At nine, you were writing books. Yes. Inspired by what you saw dad do. Yes. The story behind this book, I asked mom and dad, I want to write a book. And then we got on mom's computer. Then she's like, okay, let's start writing the book. So children do what they only see. Because even if you tell the child to sit down, they will sit down, but th not because they want to, because they have to. Mm. Children do what they see. Mm. So I saw my dad writing books, so mm. I'm like, I want to do what dad is doing. And by the way, dad has written quite a number of books. Yes. I think I lost count when we go to about 20. <laughs> yeah, at sh around 15 or 16 there. He's done about 15, 16 books. Yes. I hope where they are available, yours is also available, and we'll be discussing how to get the books. Yes. But continue. So d children do what they see. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, monkey do. Yes. So it's not too much what they're told, it's what they observe. Yes. And some of the things they observe at home is what they're doing. Right. Because if you, if you say bad words at home, it's yep. definitely going to affect their lives. Right. Yeah. Right. So for you, you, you followed the path you saw dad take. Yes. So you go to mom and tell mom, and I want to do a book. I've been seeing dad doing books. I want to do mine. Yeah. So you speak to mom about it. Yes. Uh -huh. We go to the computer. Right. I gave her the idea. She helped me type. Right. And then after it was all done, yep. it took about three months. All right. And then like two months publishing. But before we even go to the two, had you decided what you want to write about? Yes. I told mom I want to write about wisdom right because that's what dad has been writing about right so i so i told mom about the idea the context yep. the and all that yep. and also in one of the pages there's a picture of a helicopter right i was that time yep. i was in a helicopter Actually, ride. Actually, towards the end of the, of the end of the book. Yes. Now, folks, you need to get this book. I can tell you that for a fact. I see the pictures of of the helicopter. Uh huh. So, I was in, given a free helicopter ride because I asked. Tell me about that. So I I saw a man landing a helicopter. I'm like, Dad, can I go ask him if we can go around? And he's like, Go ask. Like right. you never know. Yeah. And then this also applies. If you never ask, you'll never know. <laughs> My friend, you're waxing wisdom, man. So I asked him. He's like, yeah, sure. And he took us all around Thika and we saw it was such a very good experience. So all you did is ask. Yes. And it was given to you. Yeah. And you took a chopper right. Yes. I, I can guarantee you there are many people who still are yet to take their chopper right. Yes. And also, mm -hmm. one of the photos was me when I was a small boy. Right. Here, you can see. Yep. Um, uh, Boaz Jola Minor was born mm -hmm. on the 17th March mm -hmm. 2010 at only 1.78 kgs, right. 3.9 pounds. So, so tell me again, at, at what point did you learn that you were born before time? When I was like 10, mm. he, my dad told me, you know, when you were born, you were smaller than a mouse. Smaller than a mouse. Yes, he could hold me with one hand. Right. Yes. And, and I see that picture on the, on the book right here. Yes. Right. This this was it, right? Yes. Uh huh. So after I was born, we really thanked God, because because of my me being alive right now is a miracle. It's a miracle. Yes. And mom being around is a miracle too, yes. man. Yes. Yes. Do you want to look at that camera and just send some love to mom as well, man? Thank you, mom. I just want to thank you for bathing me and for everything you've done for me. Wow. I mean, we can only thank God that we have both you and mom. The doctors yes. had said uh, it might be tough to save mom. Yeah. So when you look at mom today, what goes through your mind? 